Aloha, I'm Dr. Paul Morton. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about robotic knee replacements. I was born and raised in Hawaii and I'm a KL High School graduate. I went to uh, medical school at the University of Hawaii, uh, did my orthopedic training on the mainland. Uh, my residency was at St. Luke's in Pennsylvania, followed by a fellowship in hip and knee reconstruction at the University of Chicago. Uh, I then did a AO trauma fellowship in Berlin, Germany, and I returned home to practice medicine. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about knee replacements. Uh, over 600,000 knee replacements are performed every year and by the year 2030 uh, we expect there to be about three and a half million which is over a 600 percent increase from today. And knee replacements uh, are being put in younger and younger people. Uh, so the average age for a knee replacement is between 60 and 80 years old. Um, and uh, most people who get a knee replacement at the age of 60 or older, 95% of those knee replacements are still working 20 years later. However, uh, in patients who are between the ages of 40 and 50, uh, only 85% are still working at 20 years. And so this is going to be a pretty big deal uh, as we are putting in um, knee replacements in younger uh, and younger people. We also wonder uh, if we can do a better job at doing knee replacements. So 20% of people, that's one in five patients who have a knee replacement, uh, are not very sat not quite satisfied with their knee replacement. Uh, I think this has to do with a uh, large percentage of our patients are receiving their knee replacements placed uh, outside of the goal in which we want to place our knee replacement. Um, you know, for example, uh, you know, 30% of our total knees that are placed without um, some kind of navigation um, have some kind of malalignment outlier. And even with navigation, uh, with just using a computer, 9% uh, of those knees are placed uh, within, without greater than three degrees of where we expect, we expect to place those knee replacements. I think this has a lot to do with the traditional instrumentation that we use. Um, and you can see here, in this picture, you know, these uh, putting in knee replacements uh, traditionally requires the use of these mechanical jigs. And these jigs are placed up against the knee um, using our hands and, and making sure that we kind of place everything with our eyes uh, where we think it should be. So we wonder, can we do this better? Robotics is a paradigm shift from the way we traditionally did our knee replacements, whether we did it with a navigation system or with traditional instrumentation. Um, benef the benefits of using a robot is we're able to get our implants in uh, much more precisely. Uh, we can uh, customize specifically where we want our implants are placed in space and individualize it to each patient. Uh, robotics does not cost any more for each patient, um, it costs the same, whether you have it done with a robot versus with traditional instrumentation. Um, you may be able to do smaller approaches and, and less soft tissue releases because uh, you can balance the knee easier using the robot. Uh, and, you know, hopefully with all of this, it's uh, less painful to recover from. You know, the concern uh, with robotics is that, you know, you do have to sometimes put in additional pin sites in order to put these uh, robots for the navigation pins um, and it, there's an increase in upfront costs to the hospital but hopefully with reduction in our need to revise and redo knee replacements it reduces the expense in the long run. With uh, robotic knee replacements we know that we can get our implants positioned much more accurately to what we plan uh, looking at uh, one study looked at 330 robotic knee replacements and they saw that we were able to correct our knee replacements to straight or near straight which uh, can be difficult in patients with a significant deformity. Uh, another study that looked at um, you know robotic versus uh, manual total knees or traditional total knees um, there was a lot less uh, outliers and and it was much more consistent in our ability to place our knee replacements where we had planned to put them. This leads us to the question of, is mechanical alignment uh, the solution for our total knees? 
Uh, traditionally, total knee replacements were placed uh, utilizing those jigs that we talked about earlier. And uh, the jigs typically place the implants at certain uh, points. Uh, there's been a competing argument about kinematic knees where knee replacements are placed at um, a position that may require less soft tissue releases and uh, matches more where the patient may have their knee replacement. And so the idea with a robot is that we can really dial in where we're going to be placing our knee implants. Um, you know, with a traditional uh, cut, we would typically place these jigs along the outside of our, our shin bone and try to guess where we would put our, our jig and try to game for a flat tibia cut. And sometimes we would be three degrees one way or three degrees the other way. And with the robot, we know that we're, we're either getting flat or we're able to get it, you know, where we think we want it, whether it's one degree one way or one degree another direction. Looking at the femur or the thigh bone, we traditionally would put a rod up the femur, um, you know, using a guide hole. Um, but depending on where you start that guide hole, sometimes your, your angle might be a little bit different. Um, with the robot, we know exactly where the thigh bone is in space and exactly where our bony anatomy looks like. And so when we're trying to determine whether or not we want the knee to be more this way or this way or rotated more this way or this way in order to get better mechanics, we're able to put our knee replacements in an old fashion that allow us to balance the knee easier and um, make for less recuts and hopefully a more balanced knee. The idea by changing exactly where we're placing our knee replacements, um, we're able to guard the knee from requiring as much soft tissue releases. So we don't have to take as much of the soft tissue off the bone uh, in order to get our knee replacements in. With all that in mind, there's a lot of studies that are coming out with early data looking at these patients that underwent a robotic knee replacement. And many of these patients have less pain, uh, don't require as many medications to control their pain after surgery, uh, less blood loss because we no longer have to drill as far into the bone, uh, nor do we have to cut as much bone out. Uh, and a lot of these patients recover a little bit quicker. And you know, the idea is uh, with the robot, we can really align our uh, implants better. And I think a good analogy is to look at uh, the wear on a tire. You know, if you blow your tire up too much or not enough, it can wear unevenly. Um, and even mechanics, you know, they use um, computer assistance to really figure out how to balance our tires appropriately. Um, and I think our robot uh, really allows us to do the same thing. Robotic knee replacements is really growing in popularity in the United States. Uh, in 2017, 15% of partial knee replacements were done using robotic assistance. Uh, in the state of New York, um, you know, it really grew in surgeons and hospitals. 15% um, of hospitals had a robot uh, in 2008, and then in 2015, almost 30% of hospitals had a robot. Um, and surgeons, uh, it, initially it was 7%. Uh, and then 2015, it was 17.7%. Uh, uh, and if you take a look at the numbers of papers that are published on robotics every year, uh, just taking a look at the column on the side of this page, you can see that um, every year there's been a big growth in the number of papers published on robotics and the interest in robotics. Let's talk a little bit about how um, the robotic knee replacement is done and how that's different. Um, so the Rosa knee um, robot, and there's a bunch of different ways to do a robotic knee replacement, but the uh, Rosa is one robot that um, allows you to take some images before surgery. Um, and one of the things that we can do is we can take a um, x-ray before surgery and um, this x-ray is kind of a special x-ray with several markers that are placed on the side of the leg. And 
we use those markers to really map out a three-dimensional reconstruction of the bone. So, um, you know, the x-ray is done uh, at our hospital here in Hawaii, and it's shipped, the x-rays are then shipped off to the mainland where we can map out exactly where the cartilage is and uh, determine exactly where the bone is and help us map the x-ray to the machine which will later enable us to be more accurate in uh, how we map out our knees. We take advantage of these three-dimensional models to uh, preliminarily place our implants uh, before we even go to the operating room so we have an idea of what the size will be and some of the uh, intraoperative positioning that we will plan our implants to be in. The combination of image guidance and robotics allows us to place our knee replacement components much more accurately than we have before. Um, you know, with traditional knee replacements, only 70% of knee replacements were placed uh, where we intended. Uh, with just computer navigation alone, that was improved up to 87%, but using the Rosa knee, um, the accuracy is 100% which is pretty significant. So the robotic system that I've been using is the Rosa Knee. Uh, so this platform uh, essentially works through using this large robotic arm. Uh, the robotic arm is a large uh, system that is bolted to the floor. Uh, and the first thing it does in the room is it calibrates by moving around in space and really mapping out where the robot is in space. Uh, the robot arm is then connected to a cutting jig. Um, and this cutting jig is really quite agile. It can move in a lot of different places. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very accurate. I think the uh, benefit about this is that the uh, uh, jig can be placed anywhere in space so you're not really limited by some of the soft tissue constraints that your normal traditional implants uh, or sorry your normal traditional instrumentation is required uh, and if you move the knee uh, in space the robot will actually follow the knee uh, and I think the thing that's really remarkable um, about this is that uh, you know you can make your cuts through this and if for some reason you really need to make a really thin cut um, the robot is able to change and, and make a very thin cut that's even two millimeters thick um, really accurately in a way that we haven't really been able to do before uh, the other thing that's really important um, with the robot is that we're able to collect uh, live soft tissue data and put that into the robot um, and we've got these complicated screens um, with a lot more information than we've ever had that enable us to balance the implant um, before even making any cuts into the bone. So with robotics, there's a lot more information that we're able to collect than we ever have been able to collect before intraoperatively. So uh, during the surgery, we collect information on the tension of the ligaments on the inside of the knee and the outside of the knee. That's your MCL and LCL ligaments. Um, that information enables us to really dial in um, where we're placing our components. Um, and intraoperatively, you know, once we make our cuts, we can then um, see what happens with the ligaments. And sometimes we change the rotation of our components or the uh, how far the components are placed forward or or uh, backwards on the on the knee in order to uh, get a knee that is more balanced. Uh, it really is a remarkable amount of information that's collected. Um, I think one of the big things um, is that even after you're placing your knee replacement, um, you can test to see how accurate your uh, knee replacement was done. Uh, so you then take your knee through a range of motion after surgery, and you can take a look and see that the knee after surgery is a lot more balanced. 
Here's an example of a patient that I did recently uh, with a significant uh, deformity before surgery, um, where after surgery we were able to really get everything lined up uh, very nicely um, and a knee that's fairly straight. There may be a lot of surgeons who are unfamiliar with uh, robotics, and when I think about a technology like this one, I like to think about the uh, technology adoption curve. Uh, this was a, a curve that was um, found by a couple of um, researchers that were looking at the adoption of new technology in the corn farming industry. And what they found is that, you know, most people could be categorized in um, several different categories um, based on how quickly they would be willing to adopt new technology that might be helpful. Um, some of the innovators, the first two and a half percent that might adopt a new technology tended to be those who had large farms and were more educated, but uh, sometimes they were more risk oriented. Uh, the early adopters tended to be uh, community leaders, younger, um, and they uh, were the ones that kind of led, paved the way to wider adoption of these, uh, of this type of technology. The uh, early majority are uh, those surgeons who, or those, um, who are taking a look at technology, they may be a little bit more conservative and open to the new ideas, but uh, they may be more followers and see how uh, other surgeons uh, might take a role. Uh, and then there's those who are in the late majority and laggards who are tend to be very resistant to new technology and um, wait for what uh, is coming down before they are forced to change. And I think with robotics, we're already into the um, early adopters and early majority section of this curve. Um, I think we've, you know, we're well out of the innovation phase. And I think this is a pretty exciting technology and it's being adopted across the United States. Um, and I'm pretty excited that it's here in Hawaii. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. My office is at the Queens Medical Center, POB1, Suite 808. You can also visit my website at drmorton.com for more information. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Mahalo.